Genesis chapters 12 through 14, uh, reading about Abraham and uh, how he became um, so such a man of, of faith. Uh, Abram's going to become a, a giant of faith, but he doesn't start off that way. Uh, Abram is going to be a great example for us of growing in faith, growing in obedience. Uh, so before we get into that, I want to show you uh, the area. Uh, that we are dealing with quickly. And so, right, and so here is uh, a map of where Abram begins and uh, where he goes to. So I want to show you some things um, so that you can see what is taking place. He's going to start down here in the land of Ur uh, and just follow the dotted lines. He's going up here to Haran. Then he's going to come down uh, the land of Canaan, land, land of Canaan down here, uh, all in this area. Uh, and that land of Canaan is the background uh, is when I'm from when I am I'm talking. So he comes down to Shechem. Uh, there he can't find any food, takes upon himself to head to Egypt to get some food. Uh, after he's done with Egypt, he shoots back up uh, and settles in this area again. Uh, then we find that Lot is taken captive. Uh, and, uh, and we're going to find that Abram takes his group of guys and comes up here and goes into battle. So that's kind of a picture of what has taken place in the uh, next three chapters. So let's get into those three chapters. Chapter 12 in the New International Version. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. So he, he took his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land, and the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and I on the east, there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was so severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife Sarai, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see, see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you're on my sister so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that Sarai was very beautiful, was a very beautiful woman. And when the Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh and she was taken into his palace. He treated Abram well for her sake and Abram acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants and camels. But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife, Sarai. So Pharaoh summons Abram. 
What have you done to me? He said, why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her to be my wife. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they set him on his way with his wife and everything he had. So Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went with him. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. From the Negev, he went from place to place until he came to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai, where his tent had been earlier and where he had first built an altar. There Abram called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. But the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great they were not able to stay together. And quarreling arose between Adam's herders and Lot's. The Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land at that time. So Abram said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herders and mine. For we are close relatives. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Lot looked around and he saw the whole plain of Jordan toward Zoar. Well, it was well watered like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company, and Abram lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tents near Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked, and they were sinning greatly against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram after Lot had departed from him, look around from where you are to the north and south to the east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abram went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he pitched his tents. There he built an altar to the Lord. At the time when Amraphel was king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elessar, Ketelomar, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of Goyim, these kings went to war against Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shemeber, king of Zoibim, and king of Bela, that is Zoar. All these later latter kings joined forces in the valley of Siddim, that is the Dead Sea Valley. For 12 years they had been subject to Ketelamar, but in the 13th year they rebelled. In the 14th year, Kelomar and the kings allied with him, went out and defeated the Raphites in Ashtoroth, Karn, Karnaim, the Zuzites and Ham, the Emites in Shava Kiriathum, and the Horites in the hill country of Seir, as far as El Paran, near the desert. Then they turned back and went to En Mishfat, that is Kadesh, and they conquered the whole territory of Melekites, as well as the Amorites, who were living in has his on Tamar. When the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar, marched out and drew up their battle lines in the valley of Sidom against Kelamar, king of Elam, Tidal, king of Goyim, Amraphel, the king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of El Asar. Four kings against five. Now the valley of Siddam was full of tar pits, and when the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some of the men fell into them, and the rest fled to the hills. The four kings seized all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their food, and they went away. They also carried off Abram's nephew, Lot, and his possessions, since he was living in Sodom. A man had escaped, who had escaped, came and reported this to Abram, the Hebrew. Now Abram was living near the great trees of Mamre, the Amorite, a brother of Eshcol and Aner, all of whom were allied with Abram. When Abram heard that his relative had been taken captive, he called out the 318 trained men born in this household and went in pursuit as far as Dan. During the night, Abram divided his men to attack them, and he routed them, pursuing them as far as Oba, north of Damascus. 
he just, he recovered all the goods and brought back his relative Lot and his possessions together with the women and the other people. After Abram returned from defeating Kelamar and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shava, that is the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high, and he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. And praise be to God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hands. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, with raised hand, I have sworn an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or a strap of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abram rich. I will accept nothing but what my men have eaten and the share that belongs to the men who went with me, to Abner, Eshcol, and Mamre. Let them have their share. So we see some uh, some interesting things, and it probably, um, uh, well, let's do this. Famine and hunger was, were a huge issue uh, during that time. Uh, people had to work the land just like God had, had predicted. They had to scrounge for food and find it to, to eat. And God told, told Abram, listen, I'm giving you this land. This is where you're supposed to hang out. But he decides to go to Egypt on his own. Um, and we just see a, an instance of a little bit of a, a lack of faith here, but God still protects him. But in Egypt, now th this is just kind of funny, you know, in our day, in our age, Sarai is 60 years old when Abram, Abram says, honey, you're hot and you are so hot that uh, they're going to kill me for you if you don't tell them, tell them that you are uh, my, my sister. You know, Jewish legend, this is Jewish legend, says that compared to Sarai, all the other women look like monkeys. That's just, that's the Jewish legend and what they said. Uh, and another important aspect here uh, that we can't miss is King Melchizedek, uh, the king of Salem, which is the original Jerusalem. Uh, this king is also a priest. We're going to find out later that God forbids, he just doesn't allow kings to also be priests. Melchizedek is the only exception. In Psalm 110, verse 14, verse 4, uh, it tells us that the priesthood of the Messiah uh, is going to come from the order of Melchizedek. So uh, here's what here's what here's what you need to see is that God's plan is working thousands of years before Jesus ever comes on the scene. God has a plan as soon as Adam and Eve leave the Garden of Eden. God is in complete control of what is taking place. I want, to, I want to close you with a quote from a guy by the name of uh, Donald Barnhouse. He says, faith is not a mushroom that grows overnight in damp soil. It is an oak tree that grows for a thousand years under the blast of the wind and rain. Uh, our faith, our spirituality grows little by little day by day. Uh, be faithful. Be strong. Trust in the Lord. Love you. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.